Hi guys, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, sitting here this morning thinking I've got to do some videos. What will I talk about first? Um, went outside into the sun because hello, it's freezing here in Brisbane and I heard do a ghost story. Okay, so let's do a ghost story. Now, whenever I talk about my ghost stories, these are real ghost stories that have happened to me personally. Why would I fabricate this stuff? Why would I make it up? Especially when I've got no evidence, like photos, footage, EMFs or other things that would actually show that this was authentic, right? So I hope that you enjoy my um, ghost stories that I do tell. Okay, so today's story, it's about a lady who rang me up. She found me online and I'm just going to call her, I don't know, Barbara. Okay, I'm making up a name for her just for to keep her private. So Barbara found me online and she rang me up and she said, I've just moved into a house and all this stuff is happening. Can you please come out and have a look and tell me what you think? So... I spoke to Barbara for about 15, 20 minutes and she was telling me things were flying around by themselves and there was really bad smells and temperature fluctuations, all that really cool paranormal stuff that we love to hear about, yeah? So of course I was interested to go out to her house. Now she lived about an hour and a half drive away from me. So I thought, right, I'll go out on a weekend when I'm home alone. My daughter's with a dad. So I'd organized to be out at her place at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. So <clears throat> never seen Barbara. Had no idea what Barbara looked like except for hearing her voice on the phone, right? She gave me her address. So I went out, drove out. And I'll tell you what I do before I actually go into a house, especially when I know it's haunted, I will always stop about half a block away just before I get to the house and I put up my protections. I always do that because you don't know what you're going to get when you go into these houses, especially if things are being thrown around, right? So I stop the car and I'm doing this big angels, please protect me type thing. Please do not allow any of the other energies to attach into my mind, body, soul, spirit or energy field because I cover all five, right? Mind, body, soul, spirit or energy field. So I'm doing this big protection. I thought, right, I've got my powers up now. I've got my energy up. I'm going to drive around to the house. Now, the house itself was an old Queenslander. If you know what a bull-nosed, bull-nosed bull veranda looks like, it's a veranda that goes all the way around the front of the house. And there's usually about anywhere from about four to eight steps leading up to the veranda. And then um, the veranda goes around both sides of the house. Okay, so it's old Queenslander is the term. So I pull up outside this house I'm, and I'm in the gutter, obviously, with my car. And I get out and I look up this walkway and there's a little, like a little picket fence at the front, typical Queenslander type thing. And there's about 15 steps to where you walk up the little steps up to onto the veranda. And up on the veranda, there's a couple of chairs and sitting on the chair was this old lady. So I thought, this must be Barbara. She's waiting for me. She knows I'm coming. So I get out of my car walk through the front little gate, the little picket fence gate, close it behind me. And I'm smiling at this lady as I'm coming in because I'm till, still too like far away to say, hey, I'm Linda, you know. So I come up to the bottom of the stairs and as I'm walking, get it about to go up the stairs, I said, oh, hello, my name's Linda. Are you Barbara? This woman stands up. Get the hell out of my house. And I'm, what the heck? what the heck she was swearing like a trooper at me so first of all let me explain what this woman looked like she would have been about 70 75 years old her clothes weren't too old but you know how like i'm just gonna go there i'm not a racist and i don't like stereotyping people 
But you know, elderly people when they wear elderly fashions, okay? That's all I'm going to say, right? So she could have been anywhere from 1980s onwards, right? Wearing under these clothes. So I've looked at her and I said, oh my God, are you Barbara who rang me? I'm not Barbara. Get out of my house. And I thought, whoa, this lady's so rude. So I'm still just standing there like in shock that this woman is so rude to me. And the front door opens. Out comes this woman who's younger than this old lady. And she says, oh, hello, I'm Barbara. And I said, oh, my God, Barbara, who's who's that? She's looking around. Who's who? Who's who? Then this old lady's still standing there. Now, she could have been just like anyone's family. She was that apparent to me. She picks up this pot plant on the side of the, the, near the doorway. And she picks up this pot plant and she threw it at me. Now... I saw what I'll tell you I saw she picked up the pot plant like this because it's a pot plant right you know what a pot plant looks like little terracotta pot right she picks up this pot plant but she's holding it like this and she throws it like this so she wasn't actually physically holding it ah 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 because I did get a good look at her holding the pot plant right so she's picked up the pot plant and she's thrown it at me. So I like dodge <laughs> away from this pot plant and it smashes on the end of the veranda. And this Barbara woman's like, oh my God, oh my God, did you see that? Did you see that? I said, yeah, the old lady picked up a pot plant and threw it at me. She said, oh my God, oh my God, the, the, the pot plant just picked up by itself and just threw at you. Because <laughs> she couldn't see the old lady. So... I said, well, do you mind if we go down to near like the front fence <laughs> away from this woman? And so we went down the stairs and we're back to sort of like to my car and I'm talking to this Barbara lady. And I said, what's going on? <laughs> and she said, oh my God, we moved in here about two months ago. Um, we bought it. It was a deceased estate. <laughs> We bought this house and we're renovating it so then we can either work out whether we're going to live in it or sell it and make a profit from renovating it. And I said, darling, I'm going to tell you something. This old lady, it's her house. She said, what? I said, okay, I'm going to go back and have a chat with her. So I've gone back up to the like front veranda mm. now that I know what's going on. And I, I went up and there's like all these little chair things on the front veranda and there's this old lady, really angry, angry as. Oh my God, she's sitting there like doing the AH in court type thing. <laughs> if you've been following the JD story, right? <laughs> she's sitting there. Yeah, you can see the churning going through her head. What am I going to pick up this time and throw it at her? Didn't scare her when I threw a pot plant. What will I throw next time? You know, you can see this churning in her head, right? So I sort of like sit down next to her, you know, on the next chair. I said, oh, hello, my name is Linda. Um, can I ask how long you've lived here for? And she looks at me with this snarl look on her face. I've been here since 1952. <laughs> I've been here since 1952. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I said, what happened to your husband? Because I couldn't see him, right? But no lady would just buy a house by herself back in the 50s, right? So I was thinking, yeah, she's got a husband. My husband died in 1978. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, all right. Don't have to be so angry. <laughs> okay, don't be so angry. I'm just asking some questions to you. And I said, well... How long have you been here since he died? And you, yes, this is my house. I don't like people coming here. Can you leave? Leave. I don't want you here. Like, this is how she's talking to me. And I said, do you know who that is over there? I don't care who that is over there. She is not welcome in my house. I want you both to get out right now. This is how she's talking to me. <laughs> oh, my God, poor Barbara. So I've gone inside the house. Barbara said, you know, you can go inside the house and have a look around. 
And poor Barbara, you know, she's she, she's trying, trying is the operative word here, right? She's trying to rip out the carpets and take down wallpaper. But she said every time that she'd rip up the carpet, it would like unfold itself <laughs> and put itself back on the floor. Every time she was taking down the car, um, the wallpaper on the on the walls, it would all go back up there the next day. <laughs> oh God, what chances this woman got to renovate a house when you've got someone in the house that just doesn't want her stuff touched? It's because that's the operative thing here, right? This is what's happening. This ghost of this old woman who didn't even tell me her name because she was just so nasty it was her house she bought it with her husband so you can imagine every piece of carpet every piece of wallpaper every little detail cornice and doorway in this house she had that female influence like they would have had in the 50s you know the housewife where she said, that goes there, that goes there, that stays there. She had that house the way she wanted it to be. So how do you think it was when she's now died, where she doesn't realise that she's died, okay? She has no idea that she's died. (laughs) And in comes Barbara buying the house and starting to rip out all this woman's stuff. Of course she's angry. Of course she's confused. Of course she thinks that she's getting robbed where people are taking all her stuff, right? So this poor woman, Barbara, who now lives there, I I had a chat with her. I said, darling, you know, you can't get rid of this woman. It's not going to happen. She is the owner of this house in her eyes. She does not want to move out at all. She's staying for the duration. So you've got a couple of options. One, leave it the way she had it to keep her happy or move out yourself because that's about the only two options that you've got. So I left, came home, and it was about three weeks later, I get this phone call from Barbara again. She said, Linda, it got worse after you've been. I said, what sort of things? She said, oh, my God. You know, she's, we, we're getting waked up in the middle of the night. She, loud music things happening in the house. It's like she's doing all this stuff to just make us leave. And I, said, I said to her, sorry, excuse me. I said, of course, she does not want you to stay. She's doing all the proper things that you do when you want to get people out. You make them angry so they move, right? Pardon me. So I said, what are you doing? She said, well, we've just renovated the house and we're moving. As it, It's on the market now. It's on the market now. Can you imagine? You just go online, you find this beautiful renovated Queensland. <laughs> you got to laugh, right? you got to laugh at this. Can you imagine you're looking for your, your perfect home? <laughs> you find this beautiful, beautiful renovated old Queensland. You go in, you think, yeah, I love this house. So you buy it. You move in the first night. You wake up, there's an old lady looking at you. Get out of my house! <laughs> God, I really, I, I, I know where that house is. Hey, I do know the amount of, it's about an hour and a half drive away from me. And I, I seriously don't go out that way too much, but you know, I've always wanted to go back past that house and just see if she's still sitting on the veranda, trying to get rid of any new occupiers that are now living there. <laughs> oh God, so let's look at it. The psychology here. Okay. It's a woman who obviously does not know she's died so she probably died in the house because it was a deceased estate right so yeah here we go with the old someone died in the house (laughs) come on you got to see the funny side of this okay um 
Yeah, so she doesn't know she's died. So the psychology is it's still her house. She's She probably still goes into the kitchen, tries to make her apple pie and pumpkin sauce for whatever dinner that she's trying to make for herself. You know, she's still going out the back, hanging up the clothes on the back clothesline. Um, you know, she's probably still doing all those mundane tasks like we all do in our own existence. But the fact is that she's no longer alive because it's like an amnesia comes over them. They don't remember their death, okay? So the worst thing I could have said to her was, do you know that you're dead? That would have just sent her PTSD way beyond anything a psychiatrist could have helped her with, okay? So we've got to be very, very careful with what we do say to people um, when they're no longer wearing skin, okay? I'm talking about deceased ghosts because if you give them um, too much information that they can handle, they can really go into a psychosis, okay? Um, and it's not good. It's really not good for them, you know? Um, you got to do it gradually, gradually, you know? So I said to her when I was talking to her, because I was there for about an hour and a half at the house, um, I actually said to this old lady, I said, look, this is the new lady that lives here now. You know, perhaps you should be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna happen you know but at least I was giving her those little inklings you know instead of just saying look witch you're dead move on because we can't say it like that because that's just gonna really upset them okay it's still her house so it's best in this instance to just respect her allow her to stay because it is her house you know be grateful that she looked after it for so long before we came along and wanted to buy it type thing right but just respect her and allow her to cohabit habitat this location and allow her to still have her memories where she wants them you know um well, of course we you know who who these days wants the old green tiled bathrooms with the carpet on the floor you know that sort of stuff you know um of course you want to renovate it and put in new tiles and backsplashes in kitchens and that sort of stuff but as long as you talk to the ghost and say hi please know i'm please no see it's respectful please know i'm the new owner here this is now my house i am welcome to have you as an occupier as well Please understand that I want to change things in accordance with me now living here. I respect that you lived here and I respect that you had things your own way. So I'll leave this the way it was. I'll leave that the way it was. But please understand that we're negotiating. Because that's the biggest thing with ghosts, right? We've got to negotiate. Especially the ones who don't know they've died. Stay tuned in about a week. I'll do a story about Roy. Ooh, haven't ever done a video on Roy, have I? Because Roy knows he's dead. It's been five years now since he died. He lives next door to me. He knows he's dead and he hasn't left the building yet. So stay tuned for that one, guys. Hope you're all having a great day on this Saturday. And I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.